All right, so this is the moles of chalk lab. If you were in class, you're going to have some different numbers under the data table. If you are absent from class, you can just use my data. All right, so the first thing you had to do is find your original mass of your chalk, which, whoops, I'm going to put down as this. And then I'm going to draw a pretty picture. And then after I'm done, I'm going to take the secondary mass. And then how much chalk do I use? That's just a subtraction. Not very much. Okay, so then we need a chemical formula for chalk, which is calcium carbonate. We need to practice writing that. So I'll give you some hints. Ca is calcium. Go to periodic table, find its charge. It's plus two. Carbonate, seeing as it ends with ATE, that tells me it's a polyatomic ion from table E. CO3 with a minus two charge. Noting that plus two and minus two cancel out, my final formula is just CaCO3. No parentheses, no crisscross, we're all set. Determine the gram formula mass of calcium carbonate in the space below, show all work and units. Okay, so I'm not gonna actually solve this for you, but I'm gonna guide you to it. So my formula is CaCO3. So I'm gonna go to periodic table and I'm gonna find the masses. When we round them to whole numbers, we're gonna call them gram formula mass. And we're gonna add them all up. So the mass of calcium, when you look, is about 40. Round it to whole numbers. The mass of calcium, oh, sorry, carbon, when you look it up, is about 12, when you round it to whole numbers. The mass of oxygen, when you look it up, rounds to 16. However, there are three of them. So you're gonna need to multiply those. And then what you'll end up doing is you're going to come up with the sum of these three numbers. And that's going to be your gram formula mass, whatever it is. And then your units will be grams per mole. So multiply 16 times 3, get a number, add that to 12 plus 40. Now, we're going to need to calculate moles of chalk. And we clearly need the information we just calculated. Show all work and include units. Okay, so to go from grams back to moles, what we do is divide by GFM. So we're going to take the mass of the chalk we used, which was 0 0.08, and we're going to divide it by the GFM, which I didn't calculate for you, but you've got. And then you're going to divide those, and you're going to get an answer. So grams divided by grams per mole is just going to give you moles, which is the whole title of this lab, moles of chalk. OK? So you will have to fill that part in yourself. Show all work and include units. So remember, um, going from moles to anything else, we multiply. If we come back to moles, we will divide. Show all work, include units. I'm not solving these for you, but I will guide you to the answer. How many moles are in 25.0 grams of water? So I start with 25.0 grams. So grams would be over here. To go back to moles, I must divide. Now, divide by what? So it's going to be different depending on what we do. When we're going between moles and grams, we're going to be dividing by GFM. If you're going from moles to grams, we'd multiply by GFM. What is GFM? That's called gram formula mass, where you add up all the masses from the periodic table. So uh, GFM of water, that's going to go down here. Now, just. <laughs> You should know that water is H2O. We could look up on periodic table. The mass of hydrogen is one, and there are two of them. The mass of oxygen is 16, and there's one of them. So you multiply those and then add. That's going to go here. Okay? And your final units will be moles. How many grams are in 4.5 moles? Okay, now we need to go from moles to grams, which means we're going to multiply by GFM. So 4.5 moles times, we need the GFM of this, lithium oxide. Okay, so you go to periodic table, two times whatever the mass is of lithium. We're going to add that to the mass of oxygen, which is a 16. Okay, I'm not going to calculate that for you, but I'm guiding you there. How many molecules are in 73 moles of oxygen? So to go from moles to anything else, we're going to multiply 73 moles times, okay, with molecules, 
That's Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then when you get your final answer, you should put it in proper scientific notation, which is when you have only one digit in the ones place, times 10 to the whatever. Okay, how many moles are in that? So now we're given molecules and we need moles, so now we're going to divide. So we're gonna divide by Avogadro's number. And no, I'm not going to solve it for you. You can do that. Finally, how many moles are in 15 liters of NH3? So liters, that's our last kind of relationship between moles. Moles in grams would be GFM. Moles in particles would be Avogadro's number. Moles in liters would be the molar volume, which is 22.4. So liters to moles, we're gonna divide. And we're gonna divide by the molar quantity, which is 22.4. And again, no, I will not give you the answer, but I've led you there. If you still have questions, please reach out. Thank you.